let's see, with this one I can do variable font sizing. With this one I can import high-res graphics. You know, there's a lot of great software now that can let you turn out very nice-looking printed documents, but they don't do you very much good if you're still pounding away with an old dot matrix printer. The good news is you can now buy laser printers for about $1,000, and it can open up a whole new world of professional-looking output. Today, we take a look at the new generation of low-cost laser printers on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by CompuServe, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me this week, John Dickinson, executive editor of PC Magazine. John, as you know, this is the original HP laser printer back in 1984, $3,500. It weighs 71 pounds, 128K. This is the new HP LaserJet 2P, a third the price, a third the weight, four times the memory. This technology has really changed over six years to the point, it seems to me, where, where laser printers are no longer just for people who want to do desktop publishing. In fact, they're the matrix printers of the 90s for just about $1,000, roughly the price of a 24-wire matrix printer. Uh -huh. You get all the capabilities of the best laser printers on the market. They're just a little bit slower than the laser printers that are out there. You can do desktop publishing. You can do high-quality office printing. You have font cartridges, downloadable fonts, graphics, everything you could possibly want. These printers are going to do for PC usage what the matrix printers did in the 80s. John, today we'll take a look not only at this uh, LaserJet 2P, but also at low-cost laser printers from Canon, Oki Data, Toshiba, GCC. Now, what happens after you buy the laser printer? How difficult is it to integrate it into your existing hardware and software setup? How does it change your work habits? We begin with a report on one small business that just went through the transition from dot matrix to laser. The Tanner Group is an insurance and financial services company located in the San Francisco Bay Area. The firm's owner has been in the insurance business for over 30 years. In the company's early days, the only tools available for making sales presentations were mechanical calculators and typewriters. Since then, the firm has advanced through almost every kind of printing technology, from daisy wheel to dot matrix and now laser. It goes back like 32 years ago. We used uh, uh, the old Frieden calculators that ground for hours to get a proposal out. And then you had to have that individually typed up by the girl on a, a typewriter that you had at hand in those times. You couldn't do graphics at all unless it was a, a little dot uh, hand drafted on a graph paper and you'd, you'd do a graphics that way. The Tanner Group's office still uses a variety of output devices, mixing color inkjet graphics with dot matrix spreadsheets. But the firm's new Toshiba Page Laser 6 is taking over more and more of the workload. The advantages are clear to anyone who has used a mechanical printer. Unlike the typical dot matrix machines, which required foam pads and covers to cut down their ear-splitting staccato, laser printers are practically silent. They also offer a higher resolution and faster printing. At present, the laser technology is limited to monochrome output, but the Tanner Group is pleased with the flexibility of its new printer. In this business, your image and your presentation are, are what go before you if you're not in front of the people yourself. So we've always tried to maintain the best and the latest in technology in doing so. The uh, laser uh, printer up for just to give a very finished product that looks professionally done. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. Joining us in the studio now is Doug McRae, Vice President of Engineering and Chairman of the Board of GCC Technologies. John. Doug, GCC now has a page printer for the Macintosh for $13.99. That used to cost over $4,000. What happened? Well, we uh, concentrated on two different uh, improvements over the years. Uh, the first of which was being able to take uh, all of what goes on in a normal laser writer 
and move that to happening on the Macintosh. Uh -huh. um, the Macintosh already has the processor, RAM, ROM, and everything, and we can save a lot of money by not having that duplicated within the printer for the personal use. The second thing we did is went with a new generation engine uh, from Oki Electric, which is a 4 ppm engine and has brought down the uh, cost significantly. So we were able to introduce this at a $13.99 price point. 4 ppm is four pages a minute, and that's roughly what, half of what a laser writer That's about be. half the laser writer, correct. Doug, before we get to looking at the output, give us just a quick tour of the box here. Okay. Um, the box uh, is highlighted by a couple of things, a small footprint, uh, the ability to run envelopes through it, straight mm -hmm. paper path or wrap around, and a uh, very useful uh, user interface on the front menu. Uh, you can step through, set languages, set uh -huh. uh, the amount of time it takes before it goes into its sleep mode and becomes quiet. You can check the number of pages you printed and the consumable life at any okay. time. Okay, Doug, you've got PageMaker up here, and show us how you'd actually use the GCC printer with PageMaker. Okay, in this case, uh, what I've done is I created a uh, uh, two-page PageMaker document. The first page of which um, I've uh, done some playing around with fonts. I mm -hmm. drew at 200 points some old English fonts spelling out uh, right. PBS, and then rotated some fonts below it. Now, other than the fact that these are the GCC fonts, this is just ordinary page maker. This is ordinary page maker, and these could be GCC fonts, Bitstreams fonts, or uh, Adobe fonts through uh, the Adobe Type Manager. Right. Okay. What's happening? Um, what it's just done now is previewed it, so I can look at it on the uh, screen if I'd like before printing it, saving uh, paper and toner, uh, and allowing me to actually go in and look at it and make sure I've got the document exactly the way I mm -hmm. like it. Right. Once I'm done with that, I can uh, image the page just by saying print. And what normally happens on the printer is now happening on the Macintosh. And you're using the processor in the Macintosh, the RAM and disk drive that uh, is in it. Uh, what you just heard now is the printer has uh, started warming up. Uh, it was in its sleep mode, so it, was, it would be sitting next to your, office, or next to your desk uh, very quietly. Uh -huh. right. And when you're ready to print, it will uh, bring it, uh, the fusing unit up to temperature and will send out the page. All right, now you say it's not using PostScript. What kind of problem is that for a typical Mac user? Uh, unless you're using some of the artistic programs, such as Illustrator, um, all a uh, applications of the Macintosh are a talk quick draw because that's what you use to draw to the screen. Mm -hmm. So uh, quick draw with the addition of outline fonts uh, give the same uh, benefits of PostScript. So for most users, this printer will work just fine. There's just nothing that it won't do. That's correct. All right, let's take a look at page one here. Just like that. That's really wonderful. What we did here is a 200-point Old English font, uh -huh. and below it we rotated the fonts. Uh, having the outline fonts give you the ability to scale and rotate at any uh, angle you'd like. The second page is a much more complex uh, desktop publishing example, uh, where we've gone with a TIFF file, uh, half-tone screen, uh, some graphics, and a whole bunch of different fonts and sizes. Right. This is just like what. Yeah. All right, Doug, when you, when you buy the printer, you just plug it in, configure, and go? No, no nightmares here? You, and you load the software onto your Macintosh, so you uh, plug it in, and everything is all set. Okay. No strain, no pain. $13.99. <laughs> Correct. Sounds okay. Thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll take a look at two new low-cost laser printers from Canon and Oki Data. So stay with us. And with us in the studio now is Kent Henderson of Oki Data, and next to Kent, Marine Monahan with Canon. John? Well, we've seen some interesting stuff for the Mac market. Now it looks like the PC market has some new low-cost laser printers um, that are going to replace the matrix printers in that market. Mm -hmm. Marine Canon's a name that's uh, been associated with laser printers since the very start. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about what makes your printer unique in this market? Well, what Canon's finally done, they've been in the laser business for over five years now. They've come out with an engine that is low cost. The machine retails for $15.45. So now not only can office users afford it, it's also a market that end users can also, home users can also use the product as well. Right, and Kent, you, Oki Data has been in the business of printers for the PC since the PC came around, and now you're in the laser printer business. Why don't you tell us some more about that? Well, Oki Data has come up with a, uh, their own engine that they've put in this product, which uses LED technology. Uh -huh. And all that means to the consumers, you have the uh, more like typesetter print quality coming out of a product, and it's a step up from the 24-pin uh, impact print. You just use this word LED technology. Isn't it the case that all page printers are being called laser printers as a generic sort of term? That's true. Okay. So, so the Oki laser is technically not a laser printer is what we're saying. It's a different technology. It's a different technology that gives the same output mm -hmm. as, right. a, as a laser product to the consumer. 
How about a little tour of the Oki Laser 400, Kent? Uh, the Oki Laser 400 has some a couple of unique uh, items to it. This is a a uh, put this under here. This is the toner cartridge here. It holds 2,500 uh, or holds toner enough for 2,500 pages. These little flanges pull back when it's empty. Throw it away. Put a new cartridge in. Right. This is the image drum, and under here is a unique uh, piece that Oki has patented where. The toner, any excess toner from the image drum is brought right back into the original toner right, and it's cylinder. It's right. recycled mm -hmm. so that the consumer uh, doesn't waste any toner. Now, Kent, your printer costs $13.99. How much does all that equipment that you, had, you just replaced in there cost? The toner itself is a $33 replacement. Uh, you, we spec it out at 2,500 pages usage. Right. The image drum is a $289 retail at 15,000 pages. Right. Let's see what the page looks like when we print it. Sure. Now, if I understand it, this is fully compatible with the HP LaserJet? HP LaserJet Series 2 compatibility. So it meets what's become an industry standard exactly. for the PC marketplace. Exactly. And, and what does that machine come with in terms of fonts and so on, Ken? Um, some of the standard features with the product would be the 200-page input bin. And that's very important to the consumer that doesn't want to have to change paper a mm -hmm. lot. Secondly, it has 17 different fonts as standard, as well as uh, four different typefaces, so that the consumer does get the type of print quality that is more like a typeset print quality mm -hmm. rather than what you'd normally get out of a typewriter. Yeah. That's amazing for $13.99. Well, Maureen, let's take a look at the Canon laser printer now. Now, it is not a HP LaserJet compatible printer. Is that a problem for a PC user? Um, no, it's not. Canon has their own language. It's called the Capsule Controller Language, which supports advanced features like scalable fonts and vector graphics. Uh -huh. So what we do is we ship this driver kit with each unit sold that contains um, software, package, software drivers for packages like Windows, Lotus, WordPerfect, mm -hmm. um, most of the software, popular software packages. Now, I assume that's easy to install. Does it also provide users with updates when self software packages like WordPerfect get upgraded? Yes, yeah, so we put them on a list and automatically upgrade them. All right, could you start the uh, Canon laser printer going? Let's take a look at what the output uh, would look like, Maureen. I'm going to go ahead and print a document in WordPerfect showing you some of the features of the Canon right. product. While we're waiting for that to um, print, Maureen, Canon's always had a really interesting approach to the consumables, to the toner cartridge. Can you show us what that's like for the LPB4? Sure. Um, what Canon's developed is a single unit um, cartridge that's based on technology shared with our copier division. Um, basically, we have the toner, drum, and a lot of the movable parts all encased in this one unit. So replacing the a unit is extremely easy, and it leaves the machine virtually maintenance-free. And what does that unit cost? It retails for $95. Very good. Let's see what that output looks like. Mm -hmm. This is some of the scalable fonts you were talking about. Yes, that's correct. Um, what this allows you to do with the scalable fonts, it allows you to create the exact point size you need without having to store additional fonts or purchase additional fonts. And it also um, shows you a little bit here. It shows you our outline and our shadow capabilities mm -hmm. right. as well. And here's some more shadowing, I think. Um, this is color simulation? We um, support 64 pattern fills. And those right. are some of the pattern fills yeah. as well as our shadow effects. How about the box itself? It obviously looks a bit different from the Oki laser. What can you tell us about it, Maureen? Um, the front um, tray is a little bit different. It holds up to 50 sheets. It's a multi-user tray, so you can adjust it to the size you need if you want to do legal, letter, or envelopes. Mm -hmm. Don't you also have an optional bin that holds another 200 sheets of paper? Correct. We do have an optional um, sheet feed, a cassette that pops onto the bottom. That holds 250 additional sheets, and that retails for $195. Right. That, go ahead, John. And that makes it into a two-bin printer, which is pretty interesting for a low-cost laser printer. Correct. Yes. All right. Now, what about the number of fonts that, that come with the machine again, Maureen? It comes with 8-bit mapped and 9 scalable, rotatable fonts. Okay. And if you want more fonts, what do you do? Um, we have four font cartridges. This particular one is our SC1 card holding 22 additional fonts, and it retails for $195. Mm -hmm. So for a, about the price of a really high-quality uh, matrix printer, you're going to get a laser printer plus all these opportunities to upgrade them and upscale them and yeah. do whatever you need to do and desktop publish, and <laughs> it's a whole new world. Now, in just a minute, we'll take a look at the HP LaserJet 2P. First of all, though, suppose you decide you like something like the LaserJet 2P, but you own a Macintosh. Are you stuck in the no-man's land of incompatibility? Not necessarily. Wendy Woods has a report. These stunning graphics were made by a company called OnePass, 
a video production firm owned by Scanline Communications in San Francisco. This firm is known for its ability to solve technical problems to achieve a desired result. From this ad, to the simpler matter of making a Macintosh work with an HP LaserJet printer. Chuck Weinbar of Scanline found the answer by calling Hewlett Packard's service line and locating a product called MacPrint from Insight Development. It's software and a cable which enable the LaserJet to print Macintosh documents. So now the two work together. Chuck likes the end result, but not the wait. Up to 90 seconds for a single page. For someone starting from scratch, I don't know if I'd recommend this, this package uh, particularly. I think it depends on, on what kind of printing you do. If you're, you know, print out a lot of copies and are running a lot of documents through, then um, this, the question about speed, that it does take a long time to, to print something out, becomes an issue. If, however, you're like me, who does occasional printing and, and isn't dependent on, you know, servicing a lot of clients with my, my laser printer, then it seems to work pretty well. On another subject, low-cost laser printers don't usually allow you to print postscript documents, at least not without one of these. This is a third-party add-on product for an HP LaserJet 2 printer, which allows it to print postscript documents. This method is a few hundred dollars cheaper than buying a postscript printer in the first place, but for some people, that's worth it. In San Francisco, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. And with us now is Bill McGlynn, Marketing Manager with Hewlett Packard's Printer Division. John? Bill, uh, let's take a closer look at the LaserJet 2P, which is the direct descendant of the original LaserJet and, and quite a phenomenon. Um, first thing I notice is it looks just like the Canon. Want to tell us about that? Yeah, it is. It's based on the Canon engine, and we've been partners with Canon for a long time, ever since 1984 when we came out with the original LaserJet. So that first one was also a Canon engine machine? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now we worked with Canon before that when we actually developed some of our own laser printers, so that's mm -hmm. how uh, we've had this relationship with them for so long. So why don't you give us a little tour of the okay. printer then? One of the significant differences between this and the Canon machine is that <coughs> we build the electronics ourselves, and mm -hmm. so we have HP's PCL Level 4. Uh, the HP language in this machine. Something else that's different than what we've seen before so far in the show is that we have the additional 250 sheet cassette, uh, the optional cassette that's um, on the bottom of this printer. So let me just quickly give you a, a tour of some mm -hmm. of the features of the sure. printer that you haven't seen thus far. I'll show you uh, very quickly how that uh, all-in-one print cassette fits into the printer. Mm -hmm. That's again the same cartridge we saw on the, on the yeah, Canon. Yeah, it's the same thing, cartridge you know? that you saw before. It slides into the printer, so it's very easy to replace. We'll close the door. And this is the paper tray we saw on the Canon printer. Right. This is the same paper tray you saw there. I have the paper tray set up in this case, though, uh, instead of being used as a dual bin printer, I have it set up so that I narrow this gauge down and I'm able to put um, envelopes. So you can actually mm -hmm. print envelopes so that you can address your envelopes for the first time in history, perhaps. Right, <laughs> right. That's right. And then use the lower cassette, you know, for the paper. For the paper, for the yeah. letterhead. Right. Good. For the letterhead or whatever that you have. And uh, let's quickly look at the side of the printer here so I can give you a shot of the um, font cartridge slot. That slot, of course, accepts font cartridges, and it's compatible with all the font cartridges that we've sold. And what's Since the price range 1984. on 1984. What's the price range on your font cartridges? This one is $99, and they, you can get most of the font cartridges now for under $300. Okay. Uh, the, another significant difference, though, between this and, say, the Series 2, the LaserJet Series 2, mm -hmm. is the fact that that slot will also accept personalities, meaning different languages that the printer can understand. So in this case, this is a PostScript cartridge. It's Adobe PostScript, and it sells for $995. But in essence, by putting this cartridge inside the printer, you now have a full postscript. Post printer. So for $14.95 for the price of the printer plus $9.95, I have a full postscript printer that can do anything I need to do on a Macintosh or a PC running postscript. Right. Okay. And the benefit is that if you're not sure you don't need postscript, then you don't have to buy yeah. it right. initially. And you can also pass it around if you uh, have a lot of 2Ps, I hope. <laughs> Well, now, you, you were talking about the envelopes, uh, right. there, Bill. That's a big problem with laser printers. The envelopes, it's plain envelope stock here, and I, and I load it up right through the front, and I'll show you a brief demo here of how, um, how the envelopes work. Um, let me get to that part in my demo. 
Now there. we're going to print a letter and an envelope all at once. Right. I'm going to print a letter and an envelope. It'll take the envelope from the uh, front and then it'll pick up the page of paper from down below. I have it set up so that both of those will come out the front mm -hmm. okay. for the demo purpose. Usually you always want the uh, envelope to come out the front anyway and there's a tray that fits right on the front of the printer. I here. see. And the paper tray, again, you have on the bottom is an optional thing. That's not part of the basic printer, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's, that lists for $195, right. and you don't have to buy that in the beginning either if you don't feel okay, you have so a need. Okay, so it's painfully sucking in that envelope right now. It looks pretty severe, but when the end product comes out, it looks fine. So. <laughs> and here it comes. Got that? Yep. You always are encouraged to. All right, and the nice thing is, you're not only printing the address, you're really, I mean, this is, you just printed the return address of the company's logo on That's right. Too. Yeah, by using the fonts, then you can print anything on that. Okay, now suppose we want to print the letter that goes in the envelope? Right, and the letter comes down next. The front panel is telling me that the PC is working very well with the printer and that there's data being received, so that's what the lights up here are telling me. And it's formatting the page on the PC now and downloading the data. Bill, I notice that here the fonts can all be rotated, unlike on the Series 2 where only a limited number of fonts can be rotated. Right. We use our Type Director product to be able to scale type or scale fonts right on the screen of the PC, and then you can pass those down to the printer. Now, Type Director is a product that's used to download fonts into the printer in the right. Series 2 and in this printer. That's true. That's correct. Okay. And this printer is fully compatible with the Series 2, so as far as language and software and and everything is mm -hmm. compatible with the Series 2. Okay, and there's our letter. And there's the letter with the uh, same letterhead as the return on the envelope. Bill, very nice. John, we have just a little less than a minute left. I want to ask you as the resident expert here in laser printers, you just went through all this with PC Magazine. Uh, are prices going to get lower? Is this a good time to buy if I want to upgrade to a laser printer? And how do I decide which one to buy? Every study we've done, Stuart, at PC Magazine has indicated that people really want lasers that cost less than $1,000. Any of the lasers that we've seen today can probably, almost certainly, be bought for under $1,000. So despite the $1,395 retail or whatever. The it, actual yeah. street price, right, is going to be at that target under $1,000 uh -huh. price. Maybe it'll come down later, but sure, the time is right now to buy a, to buy a laser printer. Um, as to which one, they're all very good quality printers. Uh -huh. 300 dot per inch laser printing has become the standard of the industry. You certainly want to look for HP compatibility if you're in the PC marketplace and, of course, in the Mac marketplace. That GCC yeah. printer is the right thing to do, I think. John, thanks very much. That's our look at low-cost laser printers. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, Apple Computer has unveiled a new line of low-cost laser printers for the Mac. The Personal Laser Writer NT is aimed at small work groups with advanced graphic needs. It comes with 12 fonts, as well as the new IBM PC Graphics Extended Character Set. The PostScript printer has 2 megabytes of RAM, a local talk interface, and an RS-232 serial interface. It's priced at about $3,300. For those who don't need PostScript, Apple also has the Personal Laser Writer SC. It relies on QuickDraw and can be upgraded to the NT version with a controller card. It carries a tag of about $2,000. Wang Laboratories has launched two new PCs using Intel's 486 and 386 chips. The 486 has a speed of 25 megahertz. It starts at about $8,500 for a base system with 4 megabytes of memory. Wang's new 386 system runs at 33 megahertz and costs about $5,000 for a 4 megabyte machine. Hewlett Packard also joined the 386 market with its most powerful PC yet, the new Vectra system. It comes in three models, and the company says it offers 20 to 25 percent greater performance than comparable 20 megahertz units. A new battery-powered 386 laptop from Zeos International will hit the market in late August. Features include a 20 megahertz processor speed, a high-resolution backlit fluorescent LCD display, and a 42 megabyte hard disk drive. Zeos also says the delivery of its 16 MHz 386 SX portable computer has been delayed. That computer offers a high-resolution gas plasma display and runs on AC power only. In this week's software top 10, according to PC Connection, Windows 3.0 still tops the chart, followed by PC Tools Deluxe. In next is Expanded Memory Manager, WordPerfect 5.1, and Quicken 3.0. Rounding out the top 10 PC titles are InfoSelect, Procom Plus, Grammatic 4, PC File, and Word 1.0. Japan's NEC Corporation has unveiled a new line of mainframe computers it claims are the world's fastest. 
The company says it hopes to sell 200 units over the next five years. But industry analysts express doubts the new computers will propel NEC to the forefront of the mainframe market. The company currently has only 8% of the Japanese mainframe market and an even smaller share overseas. Meanwhile, Hitachi says it's teaming up with a Chinese firm to develop software to connect its general-purpose computers with PCs in China. Hitachi hopes the move will boost sales of its general-purpose computers in China. All PCs in that Asian nation are IBM compatible. In this week's Ask Dr. John feature, a viewer wants to upgrade a color display and wants to know the difference between CGA, EGA, and VGA. With the answer, here is Dr. John Heilborn. The primary difference between CGA, EGA, and VGA is the size of their pixels, the shape of their pixels, and the colors that they can produce. CGA uses a large rectangular pixel like this one, whereas EGA has a much smaller pixel. As a result, EGA gives you a lot higher resolution picture. Additionally, it gives you 16 colors versus CGA's only four colors. However, the newest technology is VGA. VGA will give you square pixels, which give you a much better aspect ratio for graphics and text. Additionally, it gives you lots more colors. And since the cost of EGA is pretty similar to VGA, I'd recommend you go with VGA. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Dr. John. Well, it's not exactly a walking encyclopedia, but a New Jersey firm has developed one you can almost carry around in the palm of your hand. Franklin Electronic Publishers says its newest gadget packages the entire concise Columbia Encyclopedia. It weighs only 12 ounces, and the text is displayed on an easy-to-read, jumbo-sized display. Franklin says the Electronic Encyclopedia allows advanced searching and cross-referencing, all at the touch of a button. It even features a built-in thesaurus. It's priced at about $300 and will be available later this year. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, which offers online information related to today's subject. Members type Go Chronicles. Non-members call for more information. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.